Greetings loyal subscribers and honoured guests, it's time to take a look at Power Pack 26, which at first glance appears to have some fun stuff on it. Let's take a deeper look and find out if that is indeed the case. First up this time we have a playable demo of Stuntman Seymour from Codemasters. Now if you've watched an episode of Cover Tape Chaos recently, you will have no doubt heard me bemoaning the fact that there are so many average platformers featured on these tapes. It was a very saturated genre on the C64, unfortunately. When they're done really well though, I don't mind. Luckily Stuntman Seymour is really good, with nice tight controls, great visuals, and a solid soundtrack. You can hear the title music in the background here. My only issue would be that Seymour himself isn't all that appealing. He looks like Dizzy was left out in the sun for slightly too long and has started to melt. Other than that though, this is a great demo and reminded me a lot of CJ's Elephant Antics. It's a shame I missed this game back in the day, but I think I'll be playing the rest of it now to make up for that. A great start to this tape then, hopefully we can maintain it. Unfortunately, the very next game on the tape is another platformer, and it's nowhere near as good as Seymour. Round the Bend was a children's TV show featuring creatures that lived in the sewers, such as rats and a crocodile? I remember it being really creepy whenever I tried to watch it, and I never really liked it. Don't get it mixed up with Round the Twist, which was another, far better children's show. Anyway, this game is average at best. You get to choose which of the characters you would like to control at the start, which is nice, and the graphics are decent, but there is nothing remarkable about the gameplay in the slightest. It's by no means dreadful, but completely unexciting at the same time, and as I said, the license it's based on does nothing for me. There's also absolutely no sound or music at all in the demo, which doesn't help. Maybe someone out there remembers this show with fondness, I just remember being creeped out by it and then changing the channel. Our third item this time around is a full shoot 'em up called Twin Tigers. You take control of a helicopter, dodge and weave through the enemy bullets, and shoot down various flying vehicles including stealth bombers as well as tiny little soldiers on the ground. I have a funny feeling that this game was created with shoot 'em up construction kit, but it is slightly better than most games that were made with it, so I may be wrong. It features a two player mode which is very welcome indeed, and offers plenty of fun for a few hours. Definitely not the greatest shooter I've experienced on the C64, but better than a lot of them, that's for sure. Again, the music is very nice, which includes a really funky version of the theme from Airwolf. Decent music goes a long way towards increasing my enjoyment of a good C64 game. I did experience some quite nasty slowdown from time to time, which did mar the experience slightly and prevents Twin Tigers from being a true classic, but it is a welcome inclusion on this tape. The fourth item on the tape is another full game called Bomber. If you have heard of a game called Gaboom on the Atari 2600, where you have to catch falling bombs that a mad bomber is dropping from the top of the screen, then you will recognise Bomber as it is essentially a clone of that game, except with more detailed graphics. I didn't say better there because I think I actually prefer the look and colour palette of the older Atari 2600 game over this version. The C64 version is extremely dull, grey and lifeless. The game actually controls well, which I didn't think it would considering the original version was meant to be played with a paddle controller. I was able to catch most of the bombs without any issues. My main gripe is that the game starts to get a little repetitive after a while, but it's decent fun for a limited amount of time. Our fifth and final item on this tape is yet another full game called Cosmic Causeway. I'm just going to confess right now that I am really crap at this game. The game is a sequel to Trailblazer, so as you would expect it is fairly similar to that game. Other than that though, it is quite an original concept. The closest thing I can compare it to is Bounder, except from a perspective behind the ball instead of above. Piloting your ball through the levels before the time runs out can be very tricky, because there are holes and sections of floor that knock you back and all over the place, as well as enemies and trees to collide with a bit further into the game. As I said, I struggled to get decent at this game. I did improve a little bit, but I still found it pretty tough going. Still, I welcome the inclusion of Cosmic Causeway on this tape, because it increases the variety of the games on offer. 
Overall then, I think this was a very good power pack. The highlight is most definitely Stuntman Seymour, with the worst item being around the bend. Both of these are platformers, so it just goes to show that with enough polish, they do have the potential to be fantastic. It's just a shame that so many of them are average at best. As for the rest of the games included here, none of them are truly outstanding to me, although I do appreciate that Cosmic Causeway has plenty of fans. On the whole though, it is a very nicely varied tape and is much more exciting than the previous one. I hope that this trend continues for a while. We'll find out in two weeks time when I take a look at Power Pack 27. In the meantime, take care.